Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I wanted to take some time to go over a lab that you guys did a while ago. Uh, if you remember this equipotential line lab, um, you had the power supply, you had the conductive paper, you mapped out points similar to this. Uh, you hooked uh, the red lead up to one side, the black lead up to the other, and then used the multimeter to check for various points in here for different voltages. We had the power supply set to 10 volts, that meant over here was 10 volts and over here was zero. And you found points of eight, six, four, and two volts. And then you did this for a few lines and then you, you drew some other lines in there. Uh, this is just, it's really a uniform electric field that we had studied uh, before, um, but we just created our own in this case. So I want to take some time to go over this, uh, make sure you understand it, because all these concepts are going to be uh, helpful to understand for the test coming up. Okay, so like I said, you plotted 864 and 2 volts, um, and I just copied. This is one of the groups uh, that turned it in. It looked pretty good, and whoa, I don't want to do that. Okay, um, so this group did a pretty good job. I always question when the data looks this good because they have their 2 volts, pretty much a vertical straight line, 4, 6, and 8. Uh, which actually is what it should be. Um, but in labs, you know, nothing is, is ever perfect. But this is one lab that I think you can get to pretty close results to this. So um, I'm not questioning anything, but uh, this actually, I think they did a really good job and recognize that. The one thing I will say is when drawing in the electric field lines, they should start on the positive and end on the negative. So I'd like to see these extended uh, all the way from positive to negative. Other than that, it looks good. Um, we remember the field lines do go from the positive side to the negative. That's something important to recognize. Okay, so let's go through the lab. All right, uh, we did all that. So the first question, uh, four microcoulomb charge placed at the point 1410, how much potential energy would it have? Now, I had to read this, um, just interpolate, inter interpolate the uh, data given the map here, but during the lab I wanted you guys to actually measure it. So the, four, the point 1410 here, uh, I looked at this, it's between 4 and 6, so I estimated that was 4.8 volts. I'm using V equals EP over Q. Uh, remember electric potential is the potential energy per charge. So charge is 4 microcoulombs, so I just solved for the energy there. 1.92 times 10 to negative 5 joules. Now, you guys, I never got a chance to return these labs, so you can't see what numbers you got. Um, I was holding on to these as a review because we kind of moved into circuits at that point, so I wanted to review it just before the test, but we never got a chance to, to hand those back. So anyway, each group would have had a, a little bit different number there, um, but same idea. Number two, Exact same question, but now a negative 4 microcoulomb charge there. So you'd have the same energy, but negative. Uh, potential energy can be a negative. It's, it's referenced to zero, um, unlike kinetic energy, which always a positive value. But uh, potential energy can be negative. All right, now 7 microcoulomb charge moved from this point to this point. Uh, we want to know the change in potential energy. Okay, so... Um, just looking at equations for change in potential energy, this one is going to fit what we want it to do. So again, I looked at those points on the map, 10, 6, and 16, 14. Um, you can see I wrote on their map, um, you know, where these uh, values were. So there's 10, 6, and then 16, 14 would be up here somewhere. So again, I just interpolated the data there to get those values. You guys would have actually measured them. Um, but I got about 3.2 volts at this point, 5.6 at that point. So the change in potential, I would just subtract those, equals the change in energy per charge. Solve for that change in energy. Uh, that's how I got that answer. How much work required uh, by the field to bring a negative 3 microcoulomb charge from infinity to this point? Okay, and I say, hint, consider what the potential energy would be at an infinite distance. Well, if you have a charge an infinite distance away, it really is not affected by what's going on on that um, electric field that you created. So at an infinite distance away, the electric potential energy and, for that matter, the electric potential are going to be zero. 
Uh, so that's a key concept to recognize there. And then I, or you measured, I interpolated the data to get at that point, I got a uh, potential of four volts. Now it wants no work. Um, you look in the equations and you say work equals QED. Well, that's a problem because the electric field E is going to change as you're coming, as you're, as you're moving that charge. Plus what distance are you going to use? You can't really put an infinite distance in there. That's not going to make sense. So QED, um, is not going to work. So you need to remember, hey, remember this? Work equals the change in energy. The amount of work done will equal its change in energy. So I'm going to solve for the change in energy because we've got equations for that that will fit the situation. So potential difference equals change in energy per charge. Again, we're going from uh, from zero to four volts. There's my charge. So I get a, a negative change in potential energy, meaning this charge is going to lose potential energy. Um, but because the, the field is drawing that charge in, the force and the displacement are in the same direction. That's why it's a positive value for the work. Okay, not a huge concept in this unit, um, but remember how we define positive versus negative work. If force and displacement are in the same direction, the work done is positive. If the force and displacement are opposite directions, the work done is negative. Uh, so there we have the positive work. Okay, so next question. Pick any two points on your 6-volt line. All right, so going back here. So here's their 6-volt line. I'm going to pick this point, and I'm going to pick this point right there. Okay? Question is, uh, you're going to move negative 5 nanocoulomb charge from one of those points to the other. What will its change in potential energy be? Well, you're staying on the 6-volt line, so your potential difference is zero. You're not changing an electric potential. You're not gaining energy. You're not losing energy. In order for a charge to gain or lose energy, it either has to go towards the negative side or towards the positive side. If it's not going towards either, it's not changing its energy. So that's why the change in potential energy is zero for that one. Okay, number six. Electron is released from rest at the four volt line, or on the four volt line, um, at y equals 10. Okay, so here's the four volt line. Um, this is y equals 10, right there. So we're going to release an electron right here. So the question is, which direction is it going to go? Well, you've got a negative plate here, you've got a positive plate here. So, of course, the negative electron will be attracted to the positive plate, so it's going to go to the right. It will hit then this 6-volt line. That's the next equipotential line it's going to hit, which was my question here. So, the uh, electric potential at this point will be 6 volts. Um, I mean, it's going to go all the way towards that positive plate, but I'm just saying the next equipotential line, 6 volts. What's the average electric field? So delta V equals plus or minus ED. Uh, we really don't need to worry about the plus or minus here because we're solving for electric field. Electric field strength is always going to be positive. Uh, the direction is defined as, you know, in terms of the, the positive or negative charge. Um, but our delta V, we're going from 4 to 6 volts. Our delta V is 2. We move a distance of 5 centimeters. So here I wanted you guys to measure that. Well, since... Um, I didn't have your black sheet of paper. Uh, I just, each square here is, is one centimeter. Um, so one, two, three, four, five centimeters is what I called that. Okay, so make sure you're in meters with that. So the electric field strength, 40 newtons per coulomb. If you look at the units here, delta V would be in volts, D would be in meters. So you would get um, volts per meter. Well, a volt per meter is a newton per coulomb. So whenever you see um, electric field strength in volts per meter, don't panic. It's the same thing as a newton per coulomb. Uh, so it's, that's all the same. Okay, so part B, uh, what will its speed be at this second location? Okay, so I'm thinking energy here. Uh, some of these questions, this one you could use forces, F equals QE, set that equal to mass times acceleration, get the acceleration, you can use kinematics from there. Um, you could do that, but um, there are some problems where you can't do that. You don't have enough information. So you do have to look at the energy. So I did the delta V equals delta EPE over Q. Um, it's an electron, so it's charge 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, and actually it's losing potential energy. 
Remember how that works. If the negative is uh, going towards the positive, uh, it's losing potential energy. A negative charge here has a lot of potential energy. A negative charge here has very little potential energy. So it's losing potential energy. That's why the change is negative. So how much potential energy it loses will equal how much kinetic energy it gains, conservation of energy. So it's going to gain that same amount of energy, uh, kinetic energy. And remember that equals one half mv squared. So plug that in, mass of an electron, um, and then you can get the speed of the electron there. So pretty fast. Uh, last question, how long would it take? We're looking for time. Time's involved, you have to use kinematics somehow. So we start from rest. Our final velocity is what we just solved for. We're going to move that five centimeters. Make sure you're in meters. We want to know time. I found the proper kinematic equation, plug the stuff in, got my time there. Okay, so this is a good review of uniform electric fields. Another good review were those uh, guacamole uh, worksheets, the, the two homework assignments. It was the front and back guacamole capacitors. Look over those. Those will uh, hopefully refresh your memory on how to deal with these things. Okay, that's it. As always, shoot me an email if you have any questions.